Ladies and gentlemen, back again with another beta video for you for some GTA Online contact missions. Now, if you missed the previous episode where I go through the beta version of the pack standard heist, definitely go and check that out. I'll leave a link in the eye in the top right of your screen as well as the pinned comment so you can check that out. Very cool stuff in there. As for this video, there's kind of three parts to it. There is a part where some minor changes were done to it. There's a part where there's some pretty big changes done to it. And then there's also a couple of missions that were entirely cut. And also, finally, I'd like to give you a little bit of a look to the very first version of Rooftop Rumble. We're starting off with high priority case. Now, for most of the beta missions, because there's so much more than just these ones, but the main reason why I'm only showing off a select few is because most of the missions are following the exact same pattern as high priority cases. They just simply have a few more enemies and minor things done to it that is so insignificant that it doesn't really matter all that much. When it comes to high priority case, it's really just a matter of having a few more enemies and that's it. A little bit of a history lesson for you, if you will. I think that high priority case might be the most disliked mission in the entirety of GTA Online. For the simple reason that in order to get the briefcase, you have to make your way up to the construction site, which for most people is, um, well, difficult to figure out because you didn't know that you had to have a helicopter, which at the time I was playing it, I didn't know either. Moving on to some quick fire stuff here. Cory Cory was recently going to be called Cory Steel, and aside from a few enemy changes, the van actually didn't have any cargo in the back, where it's in the current version, there actually is something to steal aside from the van itself. Stick Up the Stick Up crew was originally going to be called Dock Shipment Steel, which I think we can all agree is a much better name, and again, some minor changes to enemies. Eboro Heist was originally going to be called Marietta Heist, which I guess minor names, but Abura Heist I guess sounds a bit nicer, and also the fact that the mission is actually played in Marietta Heist, which, you know, that might also help. Turbine Carbine was recently going to be called Blow in the Winds, and another minor change aside from a few enemies is probably the fact that um, you're able to get in the back of the van, which in the current version of Turbine Carbine you're not able to do because there's cargo in there. And yes, it does look rather goofy. Grab Your Ballas was originally going to be called a Ballas Ship Grab. Now, Again, grab your ballers is a whole lot better than baller shipment grab. It's, you know, I think a lot of these missions have a similar pattern in terms of why exactly their name were changed because they're not really that good if we're gonna be honest. But there is some stuff that is a whole lot juicier. Like the parking garage that was originally going to be called Parking Lot Job. The first team, which is the sniping team that oversees the garage and gives backup, had originally got some different objectives. Instead of telling you to go and eliminate everyone there, you were tasked to protect a document, which in the grand scheme of things doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because all you're doing is killing a bunch of people. After that, it was exactly the same as in the current version where you just have to deliver the object to the drop off and that's it. One mission that saw some major changes is none other than Lines of Coke, which was the beta name for the Los Santos Connection. Yes, that mission. It is completely different than what it is in the current version of the game. You were tasked to go to the parking garage near the construction site. And from there, you had to kill a few enemies and then make your way into the postal P van over here that would give you a GPS location to a depot within El Burro Heights. And as most of you will know, in the original you had to go to an alleyway that was a little bit closer to where the depot was in El Burro Heights. The location of the depot in El Burro Heights is still the same and everything around that area also is still the same. However, after that you are tasked to go to LSI Airport. Uh, not sure what that location is, but yeah, it's a, it's a location. Jokes aside, you're tasked to go to a hangar in LSIA, but the hangar itself is also a different location. Now, as you can probably tell, the reason as to why this is a different location that they ended up going with is because this area is just much larger. There's so many different areas you can get shot from, and you're basically always surrounded. Whereas the hangar that they went with in the current version that is now in the game, it's a little bit more compact. It's not as, um, I guess, spacious 
if you will and it's a little bit more structured the objectives are also like closer together and if you are using a buzzard or anything else that can shoot some explosives the mission itself is a lot more uh, doable i very much felt that in this version of the game if i wasn't in the armor karuma i would probably get a laser beam from five different angles especially because they're hard to see the enemies as well it is very noticeable to see why they went with this change to make the mission a little bit more accessible. Though having said this, I do think that having a version of this mission is definitely quite cool. Maybe like at some point Rockstar wants to add like a Lacentis connection to and reuse and touch up this version of the mission because it's pretty complete aside from some odd ways, obviously based on the fact that this mission was very much still in development, I think, when we are playing this. Now it's time to move on to some uh, cut missions. Uh, first up, we're going to be going through a mission that originally was already in the game, finished and everything. It's called Criminal Extraction. This mission is effectively what the liver EMP is from the third highest in the game. You know, the fifth setup mission, Humane Labs. You can kind of see as to why they removed this mission back in 2014, because a year later, in the highest updates, you were doing this exact same mission, but then with stealth instead. So sneakingly, they removed it a year before they were going to release it with the highest update. Who doesn't know doesn't get hurt, right? As for mission that actually didn't make it into the game at all, we have Hold Up and Hold Up Vinewood. Both missions follow the exact same structure. You go to a location and it's your task to go and none other than rescue Martin Madrazzo. Yes the Martin Madrazzo. Now you can probably kind of tell as to why exactly these missions were cut, because it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense that Madrazzo gets kidnapped and then six months later within single player, he's a big badass that you have to fear. It just wouldn't make a whole lot of sense from a story perspective. So that's probably the main reason why they did get cut. Funnily enough, the mission that actually made it into the game, which is called Hold Up Burton, is a version of this, but then without Martin Madrazzo. And here's the best part. In the description of this mission, they actually make fun of it. Yes, Rockstar is having an inside joke about two cut missions. It reads as follows. Why can none of my men look after themselves? A chief lieutenant can't even leave his house without being shot to hell by random thugs. I sent some men to try and protect him, but now they're not even answering their calls. Go to the apartment, collect the imbecile, and bring him safely back to my place. Which is exactly the same thing that happened to Madrazo in those two cut missions. Very funny. High Tide was arguably the most obvious reason as to why it got cut. The mission is kind of all over the place. You're tasked to go to a boat dock, get a boat, and then go to an island, and then do a thing, and then go away again. Uh, it is kind of all over the place, and especially when you get near the island, there's a highly accurate sniper rifle just waiting to beam you down. Now, obviously, this was something that was probably still in need for some rebalancing, but the mission itself is really just all over the place. I mean, once you finally get to the island and collect a briefcase, you then have to go back into the boat, back to the land, get a car, and then drive all the way to Madrazo's ranch. It is, quite frankly, yeah, it's not, it's not good. It's just, it's not a good mission, and I'm quite happy that it got cut because it is not very fun. A mission, however, that is a little bit of a shame that did get cut was the Crewman Show. Yes, that is indeed a reference to the movie, the Truman Show, but then, you know, a nice little pun. The mission requires you to go to the Del Perro metro station and rescue someone by the name of Norm. You're tasked to make your way into the metro station and make your way through a bunch of cops and then find Norm. Pick him up and then make your way out of the metro station again and then deliver him to safety. The mission itself obviously has a decent amount of cops that are coming for you. You definitely have to be a little bit careful and on your toes when completing this mission. I have to say that this is definitely the mission that I wish they would have kept in. I'm not quite sure as to why exactly they decided not to keep it in there, but I think it might have been a difficulty thing, if anything. Back in the day, GTA Online really focused on having missions being as simple as possible, and getting a 5-star wanted level and basically being bombarded with enemies might have been something Rockstar felt newer players might struggle with a little bit. And finally, none other than a Rooftop Rumble, a mission loved by many, or maybe not so much anymore, who knows. But back in the day, this was the mission that everyone played to make some money. 
and originally everyone would just go in there and blow up the document and go about their day but funnily enough the original version of the mission required you to steal the evidence by killing a driver uh, which was just standing there obviously this is bugged out but it kind of makes me wonder that the original vision of the mission was just to have the driver drive away as soon as you've killed all the enemies then this was later changed to i guess a bit of a band-aid fix to have the document be within the middle of the garage which you can then blow up and get money because that was bugged the reason as to why it was bugged is because it seemed that the document itself as a whole was bugged because i think there were a couple extra missions here too that also had the same issue look no further than the parking garage both of these missions in the launch versions of them allows you to just simply blow up documents and complete the mission. Apparently there's something weird going on where it was also seen as a mission complete upon destroying the object instead of just simply picking it up and delivering it. Some very strange stuff back then. The mission nowadays for Rooftop Rumble is completely different and way more difficult than it used to be. But it's kind of funny to see that the changes that they did do over time kind of was also part of the original vision for Rooftop Rumble. But I guess somehow they couldn't quite figure out how to make the car move or at least not in dual time. And there you have it, it is all the cut missions and changes done within the beta versions and now launch versions of GTA Online's content missions. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave it a like, subscribe for more, and if you like what you see on the channel, become a member like Chloe and GTA Plus. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all later.